Hey, hey, hey. What's up? What's up? Hatapu. Yes. Hatapu. Hatapu. Heru nefer. Heru nefer. Hatapu. I am in Pukamut. I'm here with y'all today. We're going to be talking about Summer Solstice Community Fast with the Kemetic Ahan Sama Association. Thank you all for checking in with us. Thank you for joining us today. So today is day six of the fast. It has been wonderful in terms of what I've been rocking with. You know, it has been something that I'm grateful that folks are all here to join in. Glad to have everyone here as they come in, as they come on. We started the fast Tuesday evening as usual. Please, if you get an opportunity, if you're on Instagram or if you're on Facebook, use this opportunity to check in with us so you can check us I'll check out our page. You can check us out on any of our social media where you should be able to connect with the link tree and get in. And even though we're in day six, if you are already vegetarian or vegan, you don't eat much meat, you can still join us because we actually go full raw vegan uh, starting Tuesday at sunset. So we have it set up so people can get in in a variety of uh, lifestyles in terms of how they get their nutrition. We want to be able to onboard folks in ways that make it possible for them to do this effectively. This fast is designed with an easy onboard and an easy offboard. Not, let me rephrase it, not easy, simple. I don't teach anything that's easy. I do teach simple things. The difference being that something that's simple means that it has a process and it requires some work. Easy means anybody can do it. This requires some work. And because it requires work, it means that what we're going to end up having to do is to create a space where folks going to get some work done, right? Right? And that's exactly what we want to be able to offer you is that while we're asking you to make a consistent commitment, it's a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. What we want to be able to do is offer you the tools and resources. So if you're on Instagram, what you should do is find the link tree pinned. So it's right there in the conversation. Scroll up. It should be there at the top of the conversation right as you get in. If you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, if you're on, if you're on Facebook, it should be actually posted. And one of the recent posts on the actual wall, you can check it out there. Go, you can be able to get your donations in. We appreciate that because this is not a cost-free process. It requires a lot of time for us to get these things together for you, get the documents together, get them assembled, and get them actually prepped out in a way that when you go through the fast, and you are able to go through it in an optimal way that benefits you, benefits your body, benefits your household and your community. So now that that's said, and again, this is currently day six, and if you're doing our, we have two fasts going, but the main, the primary fast that I'm talking about is the vegan raw food fast. And so some of you may be getting to, we're getting to more and more raw every day. And I really want you to remember that as we're getting more raw, you're gonna require you to drink more water, all right? I know that there's, there's water in these living foods. And that's part of the reason we want to really get you to connect with living food. All right. Even vegetables, when you cook them, are, don't carry the same energy. There are a few veg some vegetables that offer far more nutritive value raw as opposed to cooked. And there's some various. I'm not here to preach a particular practice or lifestyle. What we want to do is to get the body so it's able to relax a little bit. So we're able to, through our breathing exercises, our movement, to clear out and get the primary organ systems inside the body operating at an optimal level. To clear away things that may have been sitting in your body for uh, longer than is usually good. So what you should find is that you should have overall sense of well-being should increase should be increasing. The amount of time that you may find available to you in the day should be increasing. Some of you may find that as you're honest that you don't need a your body doesn't require the same amount of sleep. 
Some of you may see that as you're getting off a lot of these heavy pesticide laden foods, that not only are you feeling better generally, but your hearing, your sight, your sense of smell may be coming to you in ways that afford you more, that you may be more perceptive. And so for some folks that may be, you know, like in a real rush of uh, sensation. And so that it may be a real rush of sensation. What we want to be able to do is to place you in a place where you don't have to stress. It's not heavy. We're already eating vegetables. Some people call them sides. But if you get them done correctly, you'll see that they actually are, the, can be the main course and when done appropriately and correctly. So for those of you that have been following me on social media as we've gone through this, you'll see that I've shared some different smoothie ideas, variations on a couple of themes. And then we'll talk about, you know, how that works, how it doesn't work. Now, you don't have to use these nut milks. You know, for, for a lot of folks, they may have a, a nut issue, be it either almonds or coconut, or some folks are using oat as that results right now. A lot of what I use instead, like what I initially was using was a lot of rice milk. However, when I want to go for some things that's a little healthier, a lot of what I use is I'll use a coconut milk because of the fatty acids and the fat that's actually in the coconut milk. And it provides something different, not just something different, but it adds to the body. So if you're not allergic, we want to try and pick up some of the healthy fats and to do so in a way that is very advantageous for the body. Okay, so that healthy fats aid in bioavailability of some of the other herbs that we may be utilizing. Okay, I got one question that came to me at the very beginning that was uh, basically talking about uh, looking at it from a traditional Chinese medicine perspective. It was like, well, if we're doing raw and we're doing so much, if someone has like some you know, energy deficiencies in some of their particular meridians, should they do the fast? How do you balance that out? Because the main piece is we want to have the body energetically flowing in a high way. So if you check out the documents, which you'll find on the link tree, okay, you'll have access to the documents. There are su suggested teas, and you know, and ginger, turmeric are on those, which are very important for warming the system on the inside for dealing with the dampness uh, that comes from certain chi, uh, chi flow differences and different meridians. The other piece I want you to talk about is that what we utilize is what you'll see is a sample day. And I didn't go over that heavily last time. So what I'm going to do today is I'm gonna go over what, this, what a sample day might look like. So you get up, you know, you're gonna evacuate your lower GI tract, uh, which will be, you know, bladder and intestines and colon. So once that's done, typically what we wanna do is get some water and either before, after, or during, or both, or all three. Because the water is gonna help you to release. And then we get some deep breathing exercises in. And we do the deep breathing exercises for a number of things. One is that we wanna prep the body because we're gonna do a little meditation, a little deep breathing, want to clear out the lungs, clear out the nasal passages, and the deep breathing exercises that we do enables that to happen. So you do your deep breathing exercises, gets that out of the way, then you start your meditation. We do both standing and sitting meditation, but usually early in the morning, we're going to do a standing meditation. We call it a SAR stance. And if you visit our YouTube channel, Casa Aha, you'll actually see a demonstration of a SAR stance how you get into it and you're standing, you're gonna do what we call your bellows breathing. So you wanna actually see the abdomen as a bellows and you wanna be able to will the, the breath. You wanna see the breath there. You wanna to, to push and pull, push and pull. And so I know we've gone over a lot of this before. So for those of you that have watched the channel, watched the page, before we've gone over this. So I don't want to bore folks bringing you right back into stuff that we've already done. All right. However, for this season, what I do want to share is a particular breathing technique that we're getting into the hot phase of the year that will help you cool down. So if we, I did it on our, our, our Casa Bivao session, which is the Black Visions of Wellness 
program that we do Tuesdays and Fridays. Our next class will be Friday, the 11th of June, 8.30 Pacific. So if you have a chance to jump on there, check it out, check it out. You'll get on, we'll be talking about Tai Chi, Qigong, We'll be doing the short form Yang style. And we're going to begin talking about what we call our self-applied health enhancement methods. So we'll be going over some of the Qi massage and some of the additional restorative therapeutic healing Qigong in ways that enable you to look at your body and what's happening with you, particularly along lines of the fast, and put you in a position of understanding your body much more fully. So we're doing our breathing exercises. We get to our meditation, our SAR stance. We're gonna to get to our Qigong. Then we do the form. At that point, I would have a warm beverage. You probably go to go, you know, evacuate the intestinal tract again. Then we would get something warm to drink. And this is where we'd get some either ginger tea or you know, traditional medicinals has a ginger tea. I really recommend traditional medicinals because in general, in terms of you're not making your own teas, you don't know someone that has a, you know, organic tea, you know, like not the specialty folks, but, you know, people who have passed the certifications and tests so that it's been verified that they're actually growing something that's organic, right? Because we need that nowadays, unless you know the people that yourselves. Traditional Medicinals is a good company, as well as uh, Lakewood Organics Juices. Okay, so if you're not pressing the juice yourself or making the juice yourself, there are certain companies that do very well locally. One thing I do want to suggest is that we have a couple of local businesses here in Southern California that are amazing in terms of being able to help provide sustenance for those that are able to get to. One is called Major Microgreens, and they're at the Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Farmers Market on Saturdays between 10 and 3. And so they offer sprouts. Hugely important to make a great snack. You know, for those of you looking at how are you going to tie it in between meals and those sorts of things, so you get kind of in between snacks, as well as what it affords you is an opportunity to look at the nutritive value of sprouts as opposed to just looking at as it, as it grows fully. And there's some things you can actually learn, you can begin to sprout on your own. And as we go forward, I'm also going to talk about, you know, there are some varieties of recipes. Usually what I do is uh, when I post, what I, I try to do is to post and you know, appetizing as I can make it appear, you know, some of the quick, easy things I'm working on, you know, really like a family oriented uh, little cookbook where you call them like 30 minute meals like Rachel Ray, but instead of being at 30 minute meals, you know, I'm putting it here as a, as a kind of a, <laughs> as an accountability check, right? So you get with your family and you get everybody involved. And so now you got many hands makes light work. So you could take something and get everybody moving. And that's how, you know, family of seven, like we were here, we would have these wonderful meals. Now on the fast, where if you wanna make something fancy, you got some folks on here and I'll, I'll share their links once I get consent from them to share that are doing some amazing things. You know, the, the beauty of this relationship that we've been able to foster is there's some amazing chefs. You know, if you're here locally, Baba's Vegan Cafe, they have some wonderful raw plates. But since we're not going fully raw, you want to roll through Lemert Park today. They're there till about seven o'clock. And they have some good cooked vegan food there as well. Awesome. Now, one thing I enjoy that they've got right now is they have a uh, Vegan cheesecake. <laughs> Telling you, it's raw too. So you have an opportunity to really partake of something that's very tasty. And that is well done. So I really enjoyed Baba's Vegan Cafe. So you'll hear me speak about them frequently because they have not just raw plates for those who aren't don't have the time or the skill yet to do it on your own. You got Baba's Vegan. Okay, additionally, there are folks, you know, locally who are doing a lot of really good things. And so what I'll do is I'll try to share them out on our social media as we go. If you download the documentation on the link tree, there are some links in there. Also, there's some amazing books in there written by some very good folks. Okay, among them is one of the elders that writes about uh, 
land race, which is older than heirloom uh, seeds and fruits and vegetables, land race. And so he's an amazing, amazing man. He's at the Santa Monica market. It's primarily right. He's also at the Hollywood market. So if you're in the greater LA area, he's at the Saturday, the Wednesday Santa Monica market. Usually they're at the Hollywood market on Sundays. And they're just amazing. So if you've ever watched uh, my show, depending on your view, you might be able to see my collard green tree that I got from him. Yes, collard green tree, which is the traditional way that you know Africans had. It was a tree, well, like a bush tree, you know, but it didn't grow out of the ground like some of the cabbage, some of the other cabbages and some of the other things do. Okay, so beautiful, beautiful plant. And, you know, what I'm going to do in terms of today's session, so if you're on IG with us, you have a quick question you want to ask, or if you're on Facebook, you know, hit us up with the question. And what I will endeavor to do is to, you know, get that question addressed in a way that hopefully will, will help us, right? So to provide you the opportunity for direct interaction and provide us with a chance to get some clarity on how this fast is working for you. You know, what I wanted to do, because we, we're doing this fast, which usually is for purely for the Kemetic Ahan Sama Association. We've been doing this fast five years now. And so we've expanded it. And this year we've done it in partnership with the Intersection for Mankind's Remember Institute. They have a wonderful program over there. You should check out, it's called the uh, Initiates Path, where they're learning about some of the ancient texts and utilizing them coupled with the tools that we have here and some of the things they have going on over at the intersection, enable you to see clearly, to hear right well, so that you can get your heart in the right place so that when you speak, your heart and mind speak of one accord and that you're able to see through some of the bullshit that comes at you. And so some there are, this is a question that comes through, do collard greens have the purple stems? There are different varieties and some do have purple stem. Okay, however, usually they're green. Uh, what I'll do uh, is, this is a great question. So next session, I'll make sure to have one of my collard green leaves here. And the reason I'm raising collard greens, is a fun reason is actually a uh, Reverend Bridge felt us from over at the intersection for mankind. She made a dish today utilizing collard greens. So what I want to do is to really help y'all. When you see the documentation, you'll see that I give you some very basic information, what's needed, and I don't give you a lot of recipes. I don't give you a lot of to-dos. I give you a general structure of what your day should look like. And don't forget, I have forgotten we haven't finished the day yet. Okay, we're still at breakfast. It's not breakfast, not breakfast. It's break fast. We're breaking the fast. Happens every day when there's a period of not eating and in a period of eating. Okay, even if you're on a liquid fast, only way it doesn't happen is if we're just doing, you know, just, just breathing. And that's a particular type of fast that occurs. So we won't get into that today. We'll come back to that at, at the end of all this time that we have together as the fast is winding down. I'll also begin sharing some other ways that you could explore or look at ways of doing different kinds of fasts, depending upon what you're looking for your outcome to be. All right, this fasting is a very wonderful tool to aid you in building up discipline and assisting in exercising sovereignty over this physical body. All right, so hopefully that is a good start. So now after we've had this tea that we started, usually I make my own, I call it a tea, really it's more like a tonic. I get some warm water, I get some, I use local wildflower honey, raw, from a place called Aunt Willie's Apiary, right here, Ball and Crenshaw community. You get it right here, it's grown right here in Southern California where they harvest it. I use their honey. And if you can get it at this time of year, well, not this time of year, if you still have access to it, avocado honey which is awesome right now in terms of its healing properties, in terms of the way it works with the body for the season. And so what I'll do is I'll show some, get y'all understand what it looks like, what it is, that sort of thing. 
you know, but typically wildflower honey is used at this time. A lot of people are feeling like, you know, I survived COVID and then I came into the spring and then these this pollen is just taking advantage. So uh, I utilize uh, like a honey therapy because I do have seasonal allergies or I call sensitivities. And so to address that outside of the Tai Chi, the Chi Gun, and other pieces, I use the honey therapy. So you make this, it's a uh, turmeric, black pepper, a little coconut oil. And I actually put in there also some baobab powder. And I also add some sea moss and warm water. Get it in there, get it stirred up real well. It's a delicious dish. And then I get my food log out and I write my food log. So around about that time, if I'm taking my son to school, take him to school, you know, I'll get cleaned up first. Take him to school, take myself to work. And around that time, you know, I'd probably have some more water. And then, you know, then I know I got another, about half an hour and it's time to get something else to eat. And so then usually I'll have like a snack. I don't, but again, we're talking fruit usually. What I found is that if we are decolonizing the way that we eat, there's minimal waste. And so if you're using, say like if you're eating citrus right now, what you wanna do is preserve the pith and the peel. So you can eat the pith, the bitterness is helps good for teeth and all that. And the other thing is that with the peel, you can save the peel because those are very good for if someone has like a, say they catch a cold this time of year, you'd wanna go with something along those lines. You could use boiled peels, but we won't get in there, there's, you know, Again, nature provides. And so what you wanna save those and we wanna go with kind of more of a zero waste. So the one way you can do it is you can do, like I said, let them dry and then you can use it to make tea later. Okay, and then kind of a, a citrus infused tea, whether it be uh, orange or grapefruit, lemon, you can save it and preserve. The other thing you can do is get some white vinegar and put it in a mason jar, put the fruit and leave it in for two weeks and now you have your own kind of uh, citrus scented cleaner, which you can use for your mirrors, you know, some of the walls. These, and so you use it that way. And it'll help clean as well. It's a natural cleaner. So we want to be able to, on this fast, not just have you eat better, but live better, right? So you don't have to use all these poisonous products that are really polluting the planet and making it difficult for all of us to live here. All right, so again, now we got spring water we're drinking, spring water, spring water. Preferably not in the super thin plastic single use. You wanna get as large a spring water as you can uh, handle, either get you know delivered or however you can get it that works best for you and your household, first of all, let's say that. No, if you can, not get it in the thin single-use plastic bottles, that would be helpful. And that's because when exposed to heat or direct sunlight, that plastic outgasses. And so it goes, you know, it, gets, it uh, infuses itself into the water. And one of the only ways to get that out of your water is to kind of let it air out. Okay, but most of us, you know, don't have time always to let the water air out if we're doing it that way. So what you want to be able to do is, you know, as quickly as possible, put it in, you know, and you can use different containers. I got a stainless steel one. You'll have to get all like me. This is a clean canteen. You see here, this is a big one. This is a half a gallon. And because I'm watching how much water I use, you know, if I fill it up twice during the day, that's a gallon and a half. And that's about what I need when I'm on this fast. So you can do, check yourself, your body. You don't want to do too much but you do want to do enough. So if you find yourself uh, going to the bathroom a little less than you normally would, okay, this kind of fast, you should be going to the bathroom far more frequently if you're a meat eater or if you're not accustomed to eating vegetables this frequently, fresh fruit, and fresh vegetables this frequently. Initially, you may feel like, but you should go about an hour after an hour and a half after every meal, two hours, three hours at every meal. And so what that's going to mean is the frequency is going to go up. So you want to make sure that you have your water. So if you have a headache, and this is what we talked about before. So if you have a headache, 
you know, that starts to get here in the center of the forehead, just behind the eyes, that sort of area. What that means is that you got, uh, you're a little constipated. And it just means that you need some water and you can stimulate the large intestine meridian, okay? And so I'm gonna very quickly show you something that works with the large intestine meridian, which will stimulate it, which will aid you in relieving the bowels, relieving that headache, okay? Primarily, it's a dehydration piece. Okay, so I want you to understand that uh, proper hydration is connected to uh, your body's ability to correctly extract and correctly release uh, waste products in the body. Okay, so if you're not getting enough water, that's part of the reason why you're holding on to a few things you should. And so now we get to you know we've had our snacks in the morning. We're writing everything that passes our lips into the food log, including the emotion, how it makes you feel. Do you feel better? Do you feel a sense of warmth? The first time it hits you, do you feel a warming sensation? You know, so you want to be able to record that so that you know that with each meal, with each thing, how are you feeling? In addition to what's happening, we're not just providing fuel. Again, it's not a vehicle, just throwing anything in there to start the engine. We want to be conscious of what we're doing. And so even with the juices you drink, if you can masticate, chew a little bit, what, that doing, what that's doing is it's notifying the stomach or the gut. And there are lots of innervation and connection between the mouth and the gut. And so while you do this chewing, it tells your body what type of saliva to release into the mouth or what's in your mouth for it to be processed on the way down, all the way through the system. So your body is an amazing, amazing, amazing instrument or vehicle that is for your transportation and movement of your consciousness around. I like to call it a time traveling machine. And so it now affords us the ability to move the consciousness through time, all right? And so we're not gonna get all off into that, but right now, if you have another question that you wanna get on like how this fast has been going for you, this would be a great time. We're actually 30 minutes in. And so if someone, you know, if you have some questions, I'm gonna answer the questions on Facebook after this session is over. So I'll be able to answer, won't be able to answer it live, live and direct, but for everybody that's watching this, you know, you can jam on over to Facebook and hit our Casa Aha page and you can get it done there. Now, if you have questions with regard to the fast and you're on IG, just because of nature of the medium, you know, I'll be able to answer them and everybody will get that answer just because of the way the IG is flowing right now, okay? So again, if you haven't done a fast before, if you're looking, interested in what fasting is about or wondering if you have time to join our fast or if you're on this fast and you're wondering, hey, what's happening? This is feeling kind of weird or this is a little different. I may be able to offer some support and suggestion for you and point you in the right directions in terms of how to directly address that from a cultural, historical, and traditional standpoint in terms of the use of plant medicines. All right, I'm not offering medical advice, simply guiding our community as we go through this community summer souls this fast, as we move in concert with the cosmos. And so for many of you, what you'll find is happening is that you're up, you're doing this, you get your Tai Chi in after that, you're gonna do your yoga, you're gonna do your, we call it Sama yoga, but you're gonna do that at noon. You're gonna do some more Qigong at noon and you're gonna get your water in. And that gives you about a half an hour after. Now you get something to eat and your body will tell you when you're hungry. All right, most of the time, because we're told that we have to get in three meals a day within certain times, your body may not be hungry. So you gotta listen. And one of the most important cries your body has is a cry for thirst. But because most of us are so kind of locked into eating as an emotional buttress, what we end up doing is instead of drinking some water first to see if we're really hungry, we eat. And so the food law is gonna enable you to really see, are you hungry? Did you just wanna taste and then you're good? You know, I got this whole container of guacamole and I just wanted a little, that's all I wanted was the taste. Just want a little taste and now I'm good. 
Okay, so you can begin to see that for yourself and that can aid you in your communication. You know, many of us have partners or loved ones around and, you know, they may make something look really good and tasty and you may not want the whole thing, you may just want taste, you know? And my response is always with a smile, <laughs> no. <laughs> Get your own, that's why I got this refrigerator. Get you some. No, so. You know, it's always fun. We always have a little fun with that. But do get your own. So the other way you want to look at it in terms of families and love and joy is you want to spend this time that you have now because you got extra energy, spend it with your folks. You know, what you may find is even though you don't have your young people may not be on the fast because usually we don't do fast for folks under 12. That's just because their body is still growing and advancing at that age, they need different requirements. So what you end up looking at is, if they're going to bed their regular time, and I know some of us aren't old school parents, so like, like uh, a good time is 8.30. I'm just gonna throw that out there, old school. Some folks may go a lot sooner, but young people need a lot more sleep because their bodies are growing, all right? So you know that means that right now the sun sets about eight o'clock. So people should eat before sunset, but I'm getting off. So now we get our, our noontime activities. We get our, so now we, you know, we got to wait a couple of hours until we can drink some more fluids again. So then that's what we do. We check in, more than likely we're going to want some fluids. We get those fluids and the body again is going to say, hey, let's visit the throne room. So then you go and you eliminate what's not needed. Get some more water, check in with your body perhaps some juices, perhaps some tea, perhaps a snack. Maybe you want some nuts, you know, cashews or almonds, walnuts, Brazil nuts. It's a wide variety from all over the world, far more than I can cover here, that provides you with some of the complex proteins that you need. Because the main thing for most of you when you go through this, you feel full. It's not about the actual being full, our body is connected to how much time we eat and lets off the enzyme that says, hey, it's been a half hour, we're good. And it really, you could be done in 10 minutes. What you wanna do is to chew your food properly. You want, we call it masticate is what it's called, but the act of the chewing and biting. You wanna get it down into a liquid because that makes it easier for the stomach to process, easier for the entire digestive system to process. I know it's gonna sound funny, but now it sounds like somebody's grandmother, great grandmother saying, you know, you need to chew 24, 25 times before you swallow. And this is the important part where your grandmom and them and them was correct. You don't wanna eat and drink at the same time. And so if you really look into our documentation, that's what you'll see. And the main reason that you'll get behind that, this is just basic chemistry, biochemistry, physics. Your body uses an acid in the stomach to digest the food, to process the food. So seeing as that's the case, you don't wanna add water because water dilutes the acid. And so when you, so when you do that, say you drink, drink at the same time, even if you drink something that's acidic, it's not gonna be close to what the stomach is doing in terms of its digestion. What you end up doing is diluting the stomach acid. Well, that means that it's gonna take longer to digest, which means it's gonna sit longer in your stomach. The longer it sits in your stomach, then it starts to putrefy, all right? And so with this putrefication, what happens is, uh, one is you could call it, uh, people having the IBS, you can get a, what's the thing called? Uh, people regurgitate, I forget what it is, but you um, starts to mess up with you. Anyway, there's also uh, a gas, what? You know, you come up, you know, like, like walruses, you, know, blah, you can get to create the gas that comes up this way. The other side is you can create the gas that comes out the other way because it's not processing fast enough, it's just sitting. And remember, the more complex protein, we're talking animal flesh here, or complex carbohydrate, that it takes a little longer to digest. The reason we're doing the raw vegan fast is because it shouldn't take more than a couple of hours if you're properly hydrated to move everything through the system. So about, you know, every you know three or four hours. So you should be going at least three times a day, at least. Now, coupled with the breathing exercises, the Tai Chi Chuan and Samadhi Yoga that we do, 
what that means is you should, you know, five, six, seven times a day. You might be going to the restaurant. I know for some of you, man, I mean, that's a lot, bro. I don't know. I can't just be sitting near the bathroom. But I need you to think about, you know, you don't want to be carrying waste in your system longer than it needs to be in there, right? And that's why, you know, last week I talked about, you know, observing and looking at your, uh, your scat once it comes out. Because if you're using a pool, like most of us do in terms of the, uh, the water and the, and the commode, if you're eating properly, it should float. If it's taking a long time to get out of your system, it drops down and it sinks, okay? Because it doesn't have, it's not, it's been sitting a while. So you don't want it to sink directly right down to the bottom because that means that you're holding it in your body longer than you may need to. So one of the things we want to be able to do is to learn, you know, remember the signals. You don't have to hold it. Again, nobody's forcing you to hold it, right? We're grown. We're free people. We don't have to ask permission to go. When the need comes, go. And I don't mean like wait till it's about to fly out your body and rush to the bathroom. And if some of us, you know, <laughs> that's just where we are. But you know, we want to be able to work to just listen to your body. It's like, hey, let's go now and let it go. And then get up and do your thing. Everything that passes your lips goes on the food log. Everything. Water, juice, piece of fruit, fruit slices, fruit slices and peanut butter or cashew butter, or almond butter, any of those things goes on there. Raisins and how much or how many if you can. You know, a handful is good. We're not saying I had 17 raisins. Although if you know it was 17, you know, go ahead and mark that down. Okay, so from there, we get into the afternoon and mid-afternoon, we're gonna do our Tai Chi, we're gonna do our Qigong again. We're gonna do our, our yoga. And the yoga that we do is, we're gonna be doing a sun salutation. And so you've seen some of the comedic sun salutations. So you just do that each time. So you do it again, then we go through food log, get some liquids in our system, hydrate, get some snacks, doing what we're doing, food log, water, food log, and then we get to sunset. Again, we're gonna eat, not necessarily eat, but you know, depending on where we are, you don't wanna eat after sunset, okay? You wanna be able to, at sunset, get that Tai Chi Chuan, Qi Gong, and Sama, again, I'm translating the from Medina Chair Sama, get the yoga in, right? All right, you want to do that. You want to get some reading in somewhere throughout the day around all that. Get the food logs done. You may want to read before you fall asleep. You know, some of the texts, we call them wisdom from the sages of the ages. So you want to get that read, you know, whatever important books connected to your spirituality, your spiritual practice, your religious practice. Great time to get much more deeply involved in that. And then you want to remember that you know, you want to try and stay off the electronic devices right before bed as well. That's why I'm talking about reading. And so then you get yourself to bed. And, you know, if you have an intimate partner nearby with you, you put the children to bed already, it's late, er, grab some of that uh, body butter lady shea butter. I know you're wondering, body butter lady? Like, yeah, body butter lady. See, body butter lady. Body butter lady, body butter lady, body butter lady, body butter lady, shea butter. And that's not an ad, that's just who I use. And I recommend them because they're one, they're awesome, but two, because it's food grade shea butter, organic food grade, first cold press. They do some amazing things with it. I take it raw, but you know, you may not be like me and old dirty, you may not like it raw. So they also have scents, and the scents are used using essential oils, organic essential oils. But when you're with your partner that evening, what you can do is a hand massage and foot massage. You can take turns with one another. And it's a great way to keep and maintain the intimacy during the fast because certain intimacies we're abstaining from during the fast as we're elevating our vibration. 
And so through doing and utilizing those kind of behaviors, what we end up doing is creating a bridge for increased intimacy with ourselves and our partner and our household and family in that process. And then we go to sleep or meditate and meditate our way into sleep. And that's one day. Okay. And I, I mean, I know folks are going to be working. So I'm basically using that as a given that you're working. And so if you're not working, if you have the, the luxury, not to say luxury, but your work isn't in an office and you're out in the sun, that's even better. But remember, when we're doing this work, we want to talk about being in the sun. You want to, everyone was born with their own special suit on their birthday. And so what we've decided to do is, and we've called it a birthday suit. Everyone's got one. And so during this time, particularly with COVID and whether people may have taken the vaccine, not taken the vaccine, it's not important right now in terms of whether you have or haven't, although you may you know, do what's right for you, your household and family. It's a great time to wear your birthday suit in the sunlight. And some places where the sun may not always shine to share that part of your birthday suit with the sun. And I'm not saying hours, I'm not asking you to get burned. I'm asking you to expose yourself to the sun, say like these arms, and then you'll notice that and then my face and neck are the same color, but I'm a little golden the closer it gets to my, to my chest and area. See, even here on the arms, you can see the difference and the gradation because I'm wearing sleeves usually. And so you want an opportunity to have those parts of your body get some sunlight. It's be very healing for you. And it's one of the things that I always talk about as a child of the sun, to spend as much energy as I need in the sun to get what I need from the sun. It's more than just so-called vitamin D. It's more than just some heat and warmth, you know, and, you know, I may get into that some other time, but, you know, one of our other liberation tool chats but for today, that's where we are. And being that that's where we are, anybody have a direct question that we can address with regard to how they're doing on the fast, what they want to do, put it in on either platform so we have an opportunity to access it and to be able to share that out with the community. And if you hear something and you're later on catching this on our YouTube channel, you can share it there too. We'll answer it there because we respond fairly quickly to all of our social media, you know, and we'll even be sharing these particular fast related conversations on our Twitter account, which we don't normally do, but during the fast, we will. I'm going to be sharing some of the things that I've eaten today and some of the conditions that are going on. Remember, Mercury's retrograde right now, Saturn is retrograde right now. It's an awesome time to be looking at your life with a hyper focus. We're gonna have, we had a lunar eclipse last week. We, yeah, last week, week before last. And we're gonna have, while this fast is going on, a solar eclipse. We're gonna get the ring of fire. So it'd be an opportunity to check that out here in North America. I'll be putting information about how you can safely view that. And then also we're gonna have another super moon, the full moon that comes as the fast is winding down. And then we get into Jupiter going retrograde relative to the earth as well. So it's a very energetic time. So it behooves us to with all this energy swirling about for us to focus on how we as the microcosm can utilize these shifts to propel ourselves forward moving with the cosmos, with the cosmos, with the cosmos. But as they say, when you move with the energy of the spirit, what can stand against you, right? All right. Well, I don't see or hear any questions, see any questions. So I know that we'll be on again next Sunday at three o'clock Pacific time. And what I may do then is have one of my favorite folks come on as we're going to begin also talking about, well, next Sunday, I'll be coming on after 
I was with Reverend Bridge over at the intersection for mankind, where we'll be having our Sunday Reverend Bridge and Saban Poo chat, and we'll be talking about uh, High on the Hog, which is a food-based documentary looking at African-American food relationships in the diaspora, starting in Africa and then coming over. It's an awesome, awesome views, four episodes, Netflix. If you have Netflix, check it out. If not, we'll be breaking down pieces of it, what it's like and what's happening with it on, on our chat next week. And that's gonna be cool because we're still gonna be doing our summer solstice community fast. And so we'll be able to talk about the interrelationship and how that's working for us. And you begin to understand things like why it's called soul food and some other very, very, very important things behind the traditions of African-Americans and how that became quote unquote, Southern cooking and how, you know, basically every time that you eat a meal here in the United States, it's touched with Africa, be it uh, Spanish rice, which is actually African rice. You know, some of that stuff came through the slave trade. I want you to think about the concept of marinara sauce, all right, which is associated with Italy, but there weren't any tomatoes in Italy before the 1500s. Once you think about all the tomatoes that grow in, <laughs> in, in Europe, and they have all these varieties and the varieties of tomatoes actually are indigenous to the United States. And I want you to think about how comfortable many of these African dishes are that utilize tomato as if there was not trade between Central and South Americans, Americans and proper Caribbean and the Western African countries. Just want you to really think about, and the food path shows you these interrelationships shows you that there was trade between the Western parts of Africa and the Americas. And that also would then mean that there's also trade going across the other way, on through Polynesia, Southern India, Southern India, as well as that whole Southeast Asia piece across the water because there were mariners who were Africans, in addition to those that traveled over the land route. And the more that you learn about food, the more that you learn about your own personal practices and histories, you'll see that Africa has touched a great deal more of you in your life than you may have thought. And it'll give you an opportunity to afford yourself a different way of looking at food, a different way of looking at what nutrients are and what their values are, how your relationship to food may have been groomed and how you can use this time period to heal and grow from it. I thank you very much for your attendance and participation, those of you that chose to participate. I'm grateful for the time we've been able to share together today. And as such, I'd like to say, Dua, thank you. Hatep, peace. Ang Uja Sinez, life, health, prosperity, and strength. I look forward to seeing y'all next week or somewhere within the social media realm where we can chop it up about how this summer solstice community fast is working with you. Again, if you need more details, check out our link tree posts. All the information is on the link tree. All the information is on the bio that we have on Facebook or in Instagram. We'll also be sharing some of it along our Twitter, depending on where you're getting it from us. Have a beautiful rest of your Sunday or night. And I trust that we'll see you around uh, enjoying the fast. And as the moon waxes full for you to be out under the moon doing your Tai Chi Chuan and your Qigong and Sama. Pajapu, as we say, Ankh Uja Sanab. Ashe, giving respect to the ancestors and bearing witness to our eternal witnesses of the earth and sky. I bid you peace. Hatep.
Uncle Jaws, uh, life, health, and strength. And I thank you all for your time, support, and attendance. Peace. Peace, fam.